Good Friday afternoon, everybody. It is June 3rd, 2022. I'm meteorologist Tim Panday just here with your Atlantic tropical update, and we're talking about PTC number one potential tropical cyclone. That's a change from when we last spoke yesterday when it was still Invest 91L. So what exactly is a PTC? Well, it describes a system that does not yet satisfy the definition of a tropical cyclone. The biggest box that's not yet checked is there is no center or defined center of circulation with PTC number one. So once we get that, it'll be upgraded to a named storm, which would be Alex. But it does pose a threat to land within 48 hours. So this opens up the toolbox of the National Hurricane Center to release a track, a forecast track going forward and issue watches and warnings for areas to be impacted. Western Cuba and southwestern Florida that are under tropical storm watches and warnings at the current time. So the latest in the tropics, 91L, as I mentioned, is now PTC number one. By the way, potential tropical cyclones, if you're just tuning in, you're saying, well, I've never heard of that before. This isn't a really new thing. It started being enacted back in 2017 and is just there to kind of give us some guidance on storms that may develop into storms. There's certainly been PTCs before that have dissipated and fallen apart and never gone up to a named storm. So that's some background on that. Now it's already bringing impacts to Cuba and Florida. It's got a very large moisture envelope and that's already pushing on north and northeast of the actual center right now. It is expected though to become Tropical Storm Alex with further strengthening, albeit slow to occur by later today and into tomorrow as it heads towards southwest Florida. So now that we're getting the updates from the National Hurricane Center, here's kind of a time line of when to expect the the advisories to come on out so we're just looking at the intermediate advisory that came out at 1 p.m. By the way, these times are in central time, came out at 1 p.m. That's an intermediate advisory that just gives us watches and warnings, some storm details and locations. At 4 p.m., we'll get the full advisory from the Hurricane Center. That would mean and include any alterations to the forecast track, the cone of uncertainty, and also any upgrades too. We'll watch for that around 4 p.m. and then after that, 7 p.m. and 10. So we get eight advisories from the Hurricane Center every day, four intermediate, four full advisories. So that's something to look at going forward in a hurricane season. All right, here's how it looks currently on infrared satellite imagery. Not a big change from yesterday. In fact, it's not very far from its proposed center of circulation that it was yesterday. It's only about 50 miles to the north, not even that. You can see on the infrared here, as we look at cloud top temperatures, the colder they are, the stronger the storms are. So when we see the shades of uh, black and white and even some pinks and purples showing up there, Extremely cold cloud tops, strong vertically built thunderstorms well ahead and northeast of that storm center. What you can also see here, if I turn things on and, and we'll show you where the center is proposed to be from the National Hurricane Center, it is well displaced of all the convection because it is really battling against some strong wind shear aloft. And you can see that coming in out of the west southwest that is displacing all the convection on the eastern side of that center making it look very asymmetrical and lopsided. And that has been preventing it from really getting its act together and wrapping that convection around that center, closing off a center of circulation and developing and ventilating and building properly. So that's what's been holding it back. So wind shear is very detrimental to storm growth. We've talked about this for the last few days. We uh, see hurricanes as vertical heat engines and when they're tilted from the wind shear, they cannot uh, ventilate properly. It's all disrupted and that wind flow is disrupted from helping it strengthen further. So hurricane hunters have been venturing out into the storm. They had their first recon mission out into the storm yesterday, first of the season. Now they've been in it pretty, uh, uh, pretty frequently. The most recent run is heading back to Keesler Air Force Base in uh, Mississippi and uh, didn't really find much change in organization over the last eight hours or so. It's very slow to develop. Now, something also I want to take note of here, and I'm going to show you why this is going to be important to keep track of in a second when I show you the forecast track. It's crawling to the northeast at five miles an hour. Yesterday it was doing the same and the day before that. So it has not been moving very fast, hasn't been picking up forward momentum as it was forecast to do. So if it continues to move slowly, the forecast track may need to be altered in terms of timeline. And that also means longer duration over a relatively warm sea surface environment. Plenty of fuel available, but as long as this wind shear persists, it's really going to keep things in check. Here's visible satellite imagery. 
Now, this is much more obvious of the wind shear taking advantage of the system. So all of the convection, you can see the bright white cloud tops here located to the east of the center. And then when we zoom in here, you can see the low level circulation whatever there is of that it's still not very well defined but you can see the low level cloud circulation overall completely exposed because of that high upper level wind shear blowing all of that convection off away from the center so it's very very tilted and lopsided also dry air getting pulled into it you can see here on water vapor imagery water vapor imagery is basically depicting moist air and dry air moist air with our tropical convection and heavy rain here over Cuba and in the South Florida. And then off to the west, you see the copper color here. That's very dry air in the mid levels of the atmosphere. If that gets pulled on in, it chokes off the storm and really leads to rapid weakening. So it's really knocking on the door of that dry air. Also the energy with this, the atmospheric spin depicted here in the red shadings. Look at how elongated and strewn out and stretched out that is. That's not a signature of a rapidly strengthening tropical system by any stretch of the imagination. This needs to be much more concentrated and uh, circular in nature. Don't have that. Doesn't look like it will have that before it makes it to Florida, which is good news. Now, the only thing that would uh, help this to strengthen if there was no dry air, if there was no wind shear, would be the very warm sea surface temperatures. I mean, we've been talking about the Gulf of Mexico being well above average for weeks now. In fact, the last several months, it's been well above average. And the forecast track here, it's moving over sea surface waters that are in the mid to upper 80s. So you only need 80 degree water or greater to facilitate tropical development and the transfer of heat through the development of the storm and the transfer of energy. And you have that here easily. And we also, you can see here with the dark maroon shades here, a loop current that is existing in the middle of the uh, Gulf of Mexico coming up from the Western Caribbean. And what that is, is just basically a, a transfer, a current of warmer air, warmer air, warmer water off towards the north there. So there's plenty of supply of warm waters. And as I mentioned, these are three to five degrees above normal for this time of the year. The anomalies are very, very interesting to watch. All right, live radar is out from South Florida now shows the rain, the moisture envelope being very large, arriving well ahead of the center of PTC one, what will likely become tropical storm Alex. Plenty of heavy rainfall here. And again, the system's only moving northeast at five miles an hour. All right, so we did the diagnosis. Now let's look at the prognosis. What's going to happen from here on out into the future? Looking at modeling now, I want to show you the GFS ensemble. So we've all heard of the GFS model, right? Did you know that there are several members, in fact, 30 members, a member of the ensemble is basically a run of the GFS tweaked ever so slightly to try and see if we would get a different result. GFS run 30 times here. Notice the consensus, the concentration of each member along the same lines here. So very good agreement among all GFS ensemble members. In fact, that's been the case really since the inception of this being an investigative area a couple days ago. This has not been all over the place that we've seen in past systems. That's a good thing. We know where this is going high confidence that it's moving off to the northeast. Now let's look at the European model. This is several more members, almost double that of the GFS. We're up to 51 members here, and we run that model every single time, 51 times, and you get a very good consensus, very similar to what the, all the GFS members were showing as well. All right, here's a look at the brand new uh, forecast cone from the National Hurricane Center. Very similar to what we just saw in the European and the GFS ensemble members, right? In agreement here as well. Now, remember I talked about how slow this was moving northeast at five miles an hour. The forecast here does show it going from Friday here this evening at 7 p.m. at 40 miles an hour, traveling a pretty large distance to Saturday at 7 a.m. That would mean it would have to pick up its forward speed considerably from where it is now to make it to this this notch in that forecast track by tomorrow morning before it makes landfall potentially in southwest Florida. That's yet to be seen. It has not been picking up speed at all. So we'll see if that actually happens here over the next 12 hours and we can meet that timeline. Now, I mentioned also with it being designated as a PTC, a potential tropical cyclone that does allow Hurricane Center to issue watches and warnings. And we have those now and all the blue shading. That's tropical storm warnings, tropical storm watches on the outlying edges of those. Now, what that means, a good refresher here is a watch means that tropical storm conditions are possible. 
within 48 hours. Now, when you're upgraded to a warning, that means that tropical storm conditions are expected. It is imminent. And that's what a lot of these are right now. Tropical storm warnings. All right, here's how the future track models see things. Look at this large moisture envelope with heavy tropical downpours. We're talking rainfall rates one to two to three inches per hour. So flooding is certainly going to be the main emphasis on this for South Florida over the next 24 hours. So the system moves inland tomorrow morning, exits by Saturday afternoon, leaving behind rainfall totals. This is a brand new run. Look at the southern tip of Florida getting potentially well over a foot of rain. This will likely be isolated in nature. I think this is a little bit overdone, but nonetheless, flooding will be the biggest threat here for South Florida in the next 24 to 36 hours. Now let's also talk wind because it's a tropical system. It has a wind component to it, but this is not an extraordinary wind event by any means. The probabilities of seeing tropical storm force winds 39 miles per hour or greater are low and south of 50%. The exception being this little notch here to the south southeast of Fort Myers. So winds not an extraordinary event here. In fact, we can go through future track and show it with the track of the storm. Wind gusts may be at a, at a time or two getting close to tropical storm force, but not sustained. So wind not the biggest deal here. It's going to be the flooding potential over the next 24 to 36 hours in South Florida. All right, I know we went over a lot of details with this system. We get in depth with these tropical systems to make sure you're informed, you can make informed decisions. Until next time, David Paul will be in later on this evening if this storm does in fact get upgraded to Tropical Storm Alex. He'll have a brand new update for you then, but until then you can find me on social media, on Twitter, on Instagram, and on Facebook.